Baltimore, we welcome you. The PCD Ministries in Baltimore, Maryland, 3201 Garrison Boulevard. The wonderful pastors, Dr. Marie E. Bryce Hawkins. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we come to give God glory today because he is so worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. And we give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I love you today. Hallelujah. We give you praise today. Hallelujah. We lift up our hearts to you. We open up our hearts to you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. Oh, thank you. We welcome you in Jesus' name. The Pentecostal Church of Deliverance, 3201 Garrison Boulevard in Baltimore, Maryland, 21216, where the wonderful pastor is Dr. Marie E. Bryce Hawk, because God has something for you today. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Our hearts and minds clear, Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus as your humble servants, oh, Father. We want to give you praise today. We're asking you, oh, Lord, if you would use your vessels today, oh, Lord, to give to your people, to share you with your people, Lord. Touch us, oh, God, to touch your people. Use us, oh, Lord, so there be a heart change, a heart pricked, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your anointing for it destroys the yoke. We thank you for your power because there's no other name greater than the name Jesus. And it's all powerful, oh God. You are omnipotent, oh Lord. You are omnipresent. Lord, you are right where we are. You are right where they are. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for soothing the hearts. We thank you for calming the fears. And we thank you for ultimate praise today. Unlimited praise and worship today. Lord, we thank you. Come on and give God praise out there in Facebook and YouTube. Give God praise where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you right now, God. We thank you right now, God. Expect something from God today. Expect something from God today so you can receive from him. He's a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. He's still a prayer answerer. And the blood still works. Lord, we thank you. And we praise you right now. We're going to call Evangelist Booker to come and give us glory and to give us praise in Jesus' name. Sing a song. Hallelujah. It's just another name that the Lord has kept me is just another day that the Lord he has kept me he has kept me from the labor when my mind stayed on Jesus, it's just another day that the Lord, He has kept me. It's just another day that the Lord has kept me it's just another day that my Savior he truly has kept me he Oh, my God. 
It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Whatever's going on in your life, God will destroy it. Keep the anointing a part of your life and watch the yokes be destroyed. Hallelujah, glory. We welcome you in the name of Jesus to Pure Costa Church of Deliverance, PCD Ministries, where the wonderful pastors, Dr. Marie Bryce Hawkins, 3201 Garrison Boulevard in Baltimore, Maryland. We thank God for you tuning in today. Facebook Live, YouTube Live, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Praise God with us out there. Worship God. This is your chance to give God your all. Open your hearts up to him, and we thank you. If you can't get online, tell people to call the conference line. We're live on 339-207-8865. If you can't get through, text the number. Hallelujah. Text the number and say, call me, and the number will call you back. 339-207-8865. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory. We didn't come here to play. We came with 10 people to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God is in this place. God fills up the place. The Holy Ghost fills up the place. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. Oh, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, it is well with my soul. Lord, I'm under my side. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Calm your spirits because we serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, he's your everything. Jehovah Shalom. He's your peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well. Oh, I'm under my side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship him right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 When peace like a river attending my way when souls like sea pillows roll oh what It is 
Lift your hands with the yes. Give God your life with the yes. Oh, and it'll be well with your soul. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on and worship God out there. Come on, Facebook friends. Come on, Facebook family. Give God some praise. Come on, YouTube friends. Give God some praise. We on Facebook live. We on YouTube live. God is alive. God is alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many people running? Running for your life. Oh, so many ran from their life from a gun, from a gun fire. Some ran from their life from everything else. But how many are running towards God? If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm safe and I'm sanctified. Oh, and I'm running. I'm running for my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands out there. Yes, Lord. Come on and clap your hands. We got 10 people here. But we got 10 people here that's praising God. Because we know God is worthy. I want you to praise them out there. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm running for my life. 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 If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Just tell them I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost healed, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. Yeah. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life, yes, sir. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Just tell them I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost, heal, fire, baptize. I got Jesus on my mind, and I'm running for my life. 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 If anybody asks you what's wrong with me, just tell them I say, take the time. Holy Ghost, heal, fire. Just tell them what, tell them I say, take the time. Holy Ghost, heal, fire. Tell him, tell him, tell him I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost, feel that. Tell him, tell him, tell him I'm saved. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him, tell him I'm saved. Holy Ghost, feel that. Tell him I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost, feel that. And I'm running for my life.
Holy Ghost healed by baptism, and I'm running for my life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, yeah! 99 and a half won't do. We got to make a hundred, y'all. Hallelujah! Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for praising and worshiping God with us. We're running for our lives over at PCD. And we just thank God you have time to tell somebody, turn on PCD Live, PCD Ministries on Facebook, PCD Ministries on YouTube. Call the number 339-207-8865 so they won't miss the word that is coming from the Lord through our wonderful pastor. So we want you to open up your hearts, clear your minds. Don't let nothing distract you because we're about to hear a word from the Lord. We want to present to some and introduce to others our wonderful great leader and overseer and founder, Dr. Marie E. Bryce Hawkins. God bless you. We thank you. Lord, give us a word today. Hallelujah. you in the audience. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. every time I come here on Sunday morning, I always quote the scripture, say, where there are two or three gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. And he is right here in the name of Jesus. Pastor Taylor, I look over there at you. And see how you are giving God the glory and praise in his holy name. Hallelujah. We all got something to praise our God for. Amen. I don't know what I would do without him. I don't know about you. I said, I don't know what I would do without him. Praise the name of God. Uh, we thank God for these great souls. Amen. Our musician, praise God. Our technician. Y'all just singing to the glory of God and giving God the glory, giving God the praise. Well, I'm going to come with the word of God. Amen. And when I come, I like to make it plain so we can get a good understanding of where we're coming from and the day in which we are living in. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a difficult time which we're living in and I think by now looking at CNN and if you listen, looking at Fox News Yes, you're going to know the time that we're living in. But I'm so glad who I know. I'm so glad that I'm hidden in Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. Come on, somebody. I said, I'm glad that I'm hid in Christ Jesus. I'm glad that I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we are going to ask you this morning to turn your Bibles, praise God. To Revelation, the third chapter of Revelation. We're going to talk a little bit now. These are the seven churches, amen, that after that John was put on the Isle of Patmos. And he was left there to die. When you feel like you're somewhere by yourself. I know many of us right now feel like that we are, we are by ourselves. We are cast to the side. But they done murder most of the apostles. They were persecuted for the name of Jesus. Their meshes were not popular. Because they preached Jesus and him crucified. And as I said before that, the ungodly do not want to hear the name of Jesus and want to hear nothing about the blood of Jesus. But when they thought that everything was over with, 
And God had a reason for sending a message to these particular seven churches. Because in the world in which we live in right now, this church has every spirit of those seven churches. Amen. So Jesus is not dead. He's still alive. The world is operating as though there is no God. Oh, shout out my As though God is dead, but he is still talking today. Hallelujah, Jesus. So the Lord led me to preach from uh, the latter, preach about the latter seal church. Because that's exactly where we are today. The latter seal church. Amen. The latter seal church. Amen. And we're going to read, praise God, from Revelation, the third chapter, and the 14th verse. Praise the name of God. And unto the angel of the church of the latter sins, write these things with the amen. Well, the amen is Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus Christ's name. See, amen is his name, and he has the last word. I said, Jesus has the last word. So the word to believe is amen. Amen, Lord. Truth, Lord. Let it be. And the word of God said he's the beginning and he's the end. Amen. He started this thing and guess who's going to end it? He's going to end it. And I love it. Hallelujah. Because I know that he's still alive. Right today, while the world is acting crazy, cutting up, and not giving his name, don't even call his name as I often say and I got to keep on saying it because it's true in the last days in which we are living. And I'm the one that's going to remind the people because God gave me a voice to warn the people in this day and time. And all the promise of God is, yeah, Lord, all the promises. So we don't have to be afraid because whatever God said in his word, he will bring his word to pass because all of God's word is amen. Yes, Lord, is amen. He has the last say. That's why I love the word of God. That's why I love the Bible. That's why I read. That's why I pray. That's why I dedicate myself. That's why I consecrate myself. That's why I want to know what the word of God is saying about this situation now and what the word of God is saying about this world and what the God is saying about the church. And guess what? Take it individual. What is God saying to you now? Are we getting a word from the Lord now? Praise the name of God. As I was laying out on Wednesday, praise God. But matter of fact, every day. But as I was here at the church on Wednesday, and then my daughter, Mama, who was there here with you? Me and Jesus. Uh, me and Jesus. That's who were with me. Me and Jesus. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Then I made my bid and I said, Well, I'm coming back down here on Saturday. Who with me and Jesus? Well, I got to back up a little bit because AJ did come here with me Wednesday. But Saturday, me and Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a time. For you and Jesus. It's a time, praise God, that you get in your secret place and talk to the Lord. Take this opportunity that God has given us and get, get in the way of God. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No man can get to the Father except by me. Praise God. That's why I'm going to preach Jesus and him crucified. All right, let's look at this church. And then it said, Jesus said that uh, these things said, the amen. These things say the anointed one. These things say the Christ. Amen. Who you all have crucified. You thought he was dead, but he's still alive. Amen. When they put when they put the others apostle to death, praise God, martyr them, praise God. But God always leave a witness. Praise the name of God. God has left a witness in this world today. With all going on, there is still a witness. God always will not leave himself without a witness. Praise his name of God. And I am one of God's witness. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it is the power of God until salvation. Come on, somebody. Oh, now y'all need to get with the real Jesus. Praise the name of God. So look what he said. He said, amen. It's coming from the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creator. God is the creator. Come on and say this message. Praise God. I, I want y'all to turn. I don't know what I, 314. I want you to follow me. So these things says the amen. It comes from the anointed 
one. They come from the one that they have crucified, thought that they have gotten rid of him. But praise God, when John felt like he was all alone by himself, left alone to die. And just in the moment that he thought he would die or the time that he thought he would by himself all left alone. But Jesus showed up, praise God. He showed up in a mighty way. He showed up in a real way. And John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Sometime when you by yourself, praise God, it's the right time, praise God, that Jesus will meet you right where you are. There's a time that we need showing up to get in the spirit. There ought to be a lost day for all of us. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, amen, the faith of and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He said, look what he said to him. He said, I know that works. Hallelujah. I know that works. That I got it, that thy are neither cold and you're not hot. All right, so we got churches up there and Jesus was looking at the Laodicea church. He said, now I see your work. You're not cold and you are not hot. In between, this is a church that is in between cold and hot. Amen. Y'all hold your amens right now. It's a church that in between, come on, you know what kind of church that is. So, say when you're cold, you're sitting up in a dead church. You're dead. The pastor are dead. The staff is dead. The music is dead. Everything is dead. It's in a affluent church because the latter see it was in a affluent city. It was one of the affluent churches that they had everything for the nature, everything for the flesh. Praise God. But now he said, You got all of that. Amen. You're in between a cold church and a lukewarm church. Well, the cold church, as I say, was the sister, for sister, sister, sister Kate, excuse me, church, for sister Kate. So, amen. They thought they had everything they need. And there was no praise. There was no anointing. There was none of that in the cold church. You know, if you, you went to uh, just visit for whatever reason, whether your family, praise God, you were just visiting that church, whether it was for a funeral, and you went in that cold church, and you're trying to find out where God is, where is the Holy Ghost, but yet it was called church. Praise the name of God on the outside. It had church on the outside. It was called church. But you said that where you could feel the coldness in there. Praise God. Amen. So God told the uh, later seers, said, well, you're not even cold. So if you was cold, I could do something with you, not cold. He said, now, wait a minute. The hot church is on fire. You need a cold, no hot. Hot, what is hot church? It's a church that praise God in a good time and in a bad time. That's a hot church. The hot church is a church that's on fire. Things not going your way. Everything coming after you. But it's the hot church. I'm in a hot church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All kinds of different reports from the doctor. Bad reports from the doctor. Want to give you up, but I'm in a hot church. And I can praise my way through my situation because I have the power of the Holy Ghost. I have something, hey, glory, that gives me life, that gives me hope. So we're in a hot church. So now Jesus said, now look, I got to talk to this church right here. It said you need a cold no hot. So when it say you're a lukewarm, you ever drink some lukewarm coffee and about to make you sick? Amen. So Jesus said to the church at Latter Sea, you are you're making me sick. Now that's all he was saying. He said, You're making me sick. So guess what? We got church right now in this day and time that is making God sick. Amen. And somebody got to stand up and preach the truth. You, they are making God sick. They're in a warm, lukewarm church. It has a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Just got a form. You know when you got a form of something, just a form. Hey, it's a form of something. Really ain't got no shape. It's just a form. Amen. But really denying the power. We denying God's real power. It looks like you got it, but you really ain't got it. You act like you got it, but you really ain't got it. You really, you know, you know how that is. It's not real. Amen. He said, "You, I see your work. He said, let me tell you something.
He said, I see, I know, I know your work, I see your work, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I will spit you out. So you become lukewarm. He said, now you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. I will spew you. You know, he was just saying, I want nothing to do with you. So we try to judge who God is. But he said, I want nothing to do with you. So he said, out of my mouth, I spit you out of my mouth. So if he spits you out of mouth, that means that you have no life. You have no hope. So at the end, where are we going? He said, I'm going to spit you out. You're no longer there. You're no longer in Christ. If you're lukewarm, it means that you're not in Christ. So it means that we got to get back in Christ. And we see that these are the end of the last time. And the door is almost open for the saints of God. He's getting ready to usher the church in. Praise God. Amen. But he said, before I usher the church in, you're going to see these great things that come upon the earth that you don't understand, trying to dig it out. But God knows that we are at the end of the time. Praise God. So he, what he did, he said, wait a minute. While everything is laid back, think it's all over with, to put the, the, the apostle up there on the Isle of Patmos, Left him up there to die, praise God. But he had life. He had power. They left him with the power of God. He had the Holy Ghost. So God said, this is just right for me to speak to you. Hallelujah. I said, God can speak to anything. I don't care how weak you are. Oh, glory. How, to, how forsaken you feel. God said, this is the right time for me to speak to you and send my message out. Amen. Because you're a mouthpiece that called for God. So God said, yeah, you left alone. But praise God, you're not alone. He said, John, are you just write for me to speak to you? And then he said, start writing. Praise God. John, start writing, praise God, to these seven churches. And then he said, praise God. And he said, look, so because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth because thou say I am rich and increase with goods. Have you ever been to a church? And see all this prosperity. Look like they got it going. Why well, you got to pray for just about everything you get. Look like they got it. Just like they just got it made. They say because thou say. Oh I'm rich. Then they look down on the little church. Oh I'm rich. And they feel like I don't need nothing. Because I got all this material stuff. So I don't need what y'all need. I don't need to be shouting. I don't need to be danced. I don't need to act like that. Y'all act like fools speaking in tongues, but I don't need that. What are y'all doing? Y'all act like fools. And they they said the church feel like they're rich and they got everything. Come on, y'all. They got all the money. They got all the gold. They got everything. Praise the Lord. And then they got it where they can't get enough. Yeah, the church was rich and earthly goods. And we can see today there are many, many of our churches are in business to accumulate wealth. And we know that's the truth, so let me talk. Many of our churches right now are in business with the saints to accumulate wealth for themselves. Oh, I'm going to tell it like it is. I ain't got nothing to lose to tell it. I'm going to tell it. And that means that we can never, never get enough. So this is the way this church was. They work schemes. They got things that they operate to promote, to raise money, to provide luxury. That's the way this church was. And then people be promoted. And as I say last week, they were running for it. Oh, they were running for, oh, I want a word. What word can I get? I want a word for the Lord. Oh, what conference are they having? Oh, God, where you say they are, where so-and-so, I just got to get me a word, child. I have, but you've been in the church getting a word. You've been getting a real word. You've been praising God, shouting, speaking in tongue, fasting, laying out before God. Continue to lay out and you will get a real word from the Lord. That's what we have to do in these days and time. We got to get a real word from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we don't just shout. We don't just dance. We preach the word. We want to get over. We don't just rip and run up there. Ooh, we got to make that. There's times that we have to make this word plain. Praise, praise the name of God. So he said, praise the Lord. Because now I say I'm rich. You don't see people that got all the 
are the goods. I don't need them. And they feel like they're more saved than you. Then they look down on you. Amen. And they look down on you because they feel like I got everything. I got it made. And I don't need, I don't need what y'all got. You tell them for speaking in tongues. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then it was, but Holy Ghost? My pastor tell me anything but no Holy Ghost. We don't need no Holy Ghost. Speaking in what tongue? That's of the devil. Well, the word of God said, if the Holy Ghost come, you should have power. So they set up in the church. God said, wait a minute. I know you had the Holy Ghost. What happened? Because the riches of this world had choked their power, their anointing out of them. So now they're saying, I don't need nothing. Look at me. Look what all I got. I don't need nothing. That's y'all. I don't need nothing. I don't have to go to prayer anymore. I don't have to go to noonday prayer anymore. I don't need to fast. They, you know what? Fasting is a lost art. They said, well, I don't need to go to fast. fast. Y'all done that praying? Y'all been y'all done that all night long in that church? Praise God. Well, this was the state that the latter seer was in. Amen. And this spirit is here today. All seven spirits are here today. But the church of Philadelphia was the love church. There was no condemnation with that church. But all the other church, God came with a condemnation. Say, I got to condemn you. I know you call yourself serving me in my name, but you don't call my name anymore. You call yourself serving me in my name, but you don't call my name anymore. My name is not called in the church because it feel like you're rich and you have it all and you don't need Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name. So I, and they say the church is saying, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, look, the church is saying, I'm rich and I increase with goods. I got all of this stuff. I got all I don't need no more, child. I got all of this. I got, oh, I know what the word of God said. He will bless us so he will fill our, our houses with good things. But honey, the people of God, some of the people have gone way beyond that until they can't even preach the gospel anymore. Can't even preach the word of God anymore. He said, look, and this is what Jesus said. Okay, right? Just tell them that yes, you got all of that. As not that they are rich. With all you got, the word of God said you're rich, you're miserable. Praise God. And you're poor, you're in need of the power of the Holy Ghost. You're in need of the anointing. Praise God. You are in need of God. All that you have, you're still in need of God. You're in need of the power of God. Praise the name of Jesus. You're in need of God. Hallelujah. You're in need of God. Praise the name of God. These churches in the last days, for the most part, they are in need of God. They need to bring the power of the Holy Ghost back in these dead churches. Oh, my friend, it's not about having a great big conference. Oh, no, that's all over with right now. That's all over with, all over with. Amen. So now it's time to preach to the souls of the saints to get them where they need to be with God in a time such as this. This is what we need to preach. And, it, and I love preaching too. I have no problem preaching it. Amen. Because I'm a mouthpiece for the Lord. And I have no problem preaching it. Praise the name of God. And then what he says. Look what he says here. Uh, he said you're miserable. Mm -hmm. You got all that. But you ain't got no peace. We can have all of that. But without the peace of God. When he said the peace that passes all understanding in a time such as this, I want to let you know that the real church has peace. Uh huh. I said the real church has peace, and they done all around us, and we have no answer for it because it's all about God business. But I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. We not, may not have as much as some buildings uh, or we are some churches that are called by the name of God. But one thing I can say that I'm not miserable. Uh, we have peace in Jesus Christ. Because it say, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Let not your heart be in trouble. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, my heart is not trouble. Uh, I feel all right when I come down in the church uh, and lay out with Jesus Christ. Uh, I feel all right when I come on Sunday. Uh, I'm not afraid because I'm following the guidelines of the governor. Uh, so I'm not 
I pray about what I hear about somebody else. You got saints sitting home now. They're afraid. I said they're scared and they're afraid. But I hear the word of God say, be not afraid, my friend. But I'm with you. I say, God, I'm with you. And I will never leave you. Listen, saints of God. Be not afraid. But God is with you. Right where you are, clap your hand out there, my little church. Clap your hands and give God the glory. Cause we know what we got. We got the power of the Holy Ghost. And after you learn how to trust him, he will take care of you. Thank you, staff, for having enough faith to be here every Sunday. Know that we are covered by the blood of Jesus. I'd rather be here than be in the grocery store. I'd rather be here for somebody praise them. I'd rather be here with the Lord. Where to a thing out in my name. He said, I am in the midst. I thank God because I'm not miserable. Because the power of God, I'm so glad that we are not wretched, we are not undone. But look what they say, and they say they are poor. What they mean, you're rich in material stuff, but you're poor in the power of God. You're poor in spirit. You need to fast, you need to pray, you need to start teaching and preaching um, the real word of God. It needs to come out plain um, so that people can be delivered in Jesus' name. Um, in a time such as this, um, the people need real deliverance. Um, they need to know what direction to go. The world is confused um, and because we are dumb dogs in the church um, and some dumb dogs that are holding the mic um, and don't know what to preach in a time such as this. Um, as I tell you every time you hear my voice, um, some has not changed the message. Um, they still preaching prosperity. Um, but is the Laosian church, um, isn't that supposed to be an example to you? Uh, let's take the word of God uh, and believe God's word. Let's take God's word in our hearts and in our mind. Let's believe what he say in his word. I don't want to be like the little seal church. I want my people delivered. I want my people free. I want my people to be free from fear. There's nothing to fear because God got you. I said God got you right in the time as we're living right now because let me tell you something you might as well get rid of a fear because this coronavirus is not going to well right now but say i'm all right i'm all right i'm all right because god got the church in his hand i say god got the church in his hand God, his blood had covered the church. That's what he died for. His blood is stamped on the church. God knows every one of his real church. That's why he came to join in the Isle of Patmos. He says, not all over. I got another message to tell the seven churches. They are the main church in Asia. because They are the one that's carrying the world. Some of you are the main churches uh, calling yourself carrying the world uh, on every TV station uh, preaching but not preaching the full gospel of Jesus Christ uh, yes uh, right in a time like this uh, you are miserable uh, you are poor uh, but you say I'm not in need of nothing uh, your blind does as the word of God says uh, in darkness cannot see uh, in darkness praise God you know the word of God is there but because the people's in darkness they can't see the light praise the name of God they're naked and need to be closed I said need to be closed with the anointed of God need to be closed with the power of the Holy Ghost need to be baptized in the spirit of God I say baptized in the spirit Period. I'm not talking about water baptism now, but I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad. He said, now you need.
need some counseling. I'm going to counsel you to buy. Come on, somebody, and praise them. So I'm going to counsel thee to buy of me. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. They've been tried in the fire. For Jesus had been tried in the fire. So go, you need to buy some gold. You need the real gold that's going to last. That gold that's not going to tarnish. Ah, you take the earth to gold, you put it in fire. It's going to tarnish. Praise God. We got tarnished Christians sitting around. Say, I don't need nothing. I got everything I need. But oh God, oh God, you need to tell them that I'm thirsty. I'm hungry after God. Oh Lord, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you right now, Lord. Cover me, Jesus. Protect me, Lord. Keep me, Jesus. After all you do, cover your face. Wash your hands. Put it on your gloves. Happy you can be here, but when it all said and done, I still got to trust my Jesus. That's why I'm at the house of the Lord and I'm not breaking no rules. Come on, somebody, and praise them. If you ever, I'd rather be alone down here than be alone in my house. Hallelujah. I know that it's stay home thing. I'm not talking about that, saints, but I'm trying to get the fear out of some of you all. I'm trying to get you to trust. Trust God, because this virus is not going nowhere no time soon. It's going to be a new way of life, and you got to have Jesus. He told the disciples, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. So through all the calamity, all the trouble, all we'll be going through. Jesus is not going to leave you to the coronavirus because he knows what he's doing. The news got nothing. The news got nothing to offer you. No Jesus. No God. No understanding. Don't know what's going on. Trying to find a cue. But thanks be to God that we know that our cue is in Jesus. But we know I said, we know that our cure is in Jesus Christ. So why sit here and worry every day? Come on, what is going to leave? What is going to leave? All we're going to do is praise the Lord. It's in your hand, God. And I can't rebuke it. If I rebuke the coronavirus, I will be rebuking God. When you rebuke, it means scoring God. It means that I'm scoring you and don't know what you're scoring. When you rebuke the coronavirus, you don't know what you're rebuking. But if your eyes were open, and I hear say, put some sap on your eyes. Say, hey, 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 hey. put some sap on your eyes. Then it's not eternal blindness. It's blinded because your eyes are diseased. And so you got to put some sap on your eyes. That your eyes will be open. That you can see. See the word of God. See the truth of God. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Right in the midst of it. Oh, right in the midst of it. Right in the midst of it. He said that I'm I and say, look, he say, and white raiment that thy may be clothed, put on the Holy Ghost, the pure garment of God, and that the shame of your nakedness, oh glory, do, do not appear, and that thy may see, put some sap on your eyes, that you may be able. To see the sin with the eye, with your heart. See, the only way you can see this thing, you got to have the heart of God. You got to have the Holy Ghost to open your eyes. Because the world eyes is disease. And we can't get them healed until the church get healed. And where the healing starts, it starts on the pulpit. Come on, somebody. It starts with the mic. Not any kind of junk. 
just to make the people happy. But tell the people, preach instant in season. When they don't want to hear it, preach in season when they don't show up. Yes, it's the time right now. Preach in season when there's two or three. It's the time right now. That's why we preaching like we got a whole church. Hallelujah, Jesus. But we preach it because we know that we are reaching somebody out there. Come on. Come on. Somebody say glory out there. Say glory. Glory. Oh. Jesus. I thought I was coming for Samuel, but I'm going to do that next week. I said, I thought I was coming for Samuel. Hallelujah, Jesus. But I'm going to hold it for next week. Because all God told us, people back there in the Old Testament of the Old Covenant, if you will repent, if you will repent, if you will repent, I will hear you. If you will repent, praise God. I get rid of your enemy for you. Now the enemy right now, you know what the enemy is? The enemy is fear. I said the enemy is fear. I said the enemy is fear right now. That's the enemy we have to get rid of right now. And if you repent before God and tell God, God will send her glory. God will allow the pastor to prostrate him or herself to pray for you. That's what they asked Samuel. Samuel, will you please pray for us? Samuel prostrated himself and prayed for the people. The people need to ask for prayer. Come on, somebody need to ask for prayer. And if we ask for prayer, God, he will. He will deliver you and set you free from your enemy. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And he said, praise God. He said, uh huh. We don't want no rebuke. I'm looking at the word of God. We don't want no rebuke. We don't want to rebuke. Be rebuke. We don't want to hear no doom. Don't give me no doom message because I'm not finished. Don't give me no doom message. All this prosperity. Don't give me no. I don't want to hear nothing but no doom. I don't want to hear anything about Jesus coming. Oh God, how foolish we are. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Well, you can't stop him. You can't change God. He's either going to be this generation, another generation when he comes. Um, what he's doing right now says he's preparing the church for his coming. He's preparing the church. That's what he's doing. Preparing. He said when you see these things, he said the end is not yet. But be ready. Hallelujah. We don't know what is coming. Could be next year. Could be tomorrow. Could be 10 more years from now. Some of y'all ain't, so God says some of y'all ain't going to be around. So prepare yourself right now. Prepare yourself right now. I know what I'm preaching. I know what I'm preaching. It's not popular. But guess what? I'm made to do what I'm meant. I'm called to do what I'm doing. And don't mind doing it. I'm called to do it. Hallelujah. I just said, Lord, here I am. Use me any way you plead to use me. Make it plain. And understandable. They need a plain word. Oh, they don't need no philosophy. They don't need no theology. They don't need no hermeneutics. They don't need all of that. They need the plain word. Jesus preached the plain word. The apostle preached the plain word. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Preached the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we want something famous. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Oh my God. You tell me we ain't got enough yet. Yeah, look what it says. Praise God. Oh God. He said, Your, sh your naked needs to be covered. He said, The nakedness of shame. Do you see all the stuff that we see? Do you pay attention to what we see every day on TV? And don't you know that the Chris is laughing right along with the world? I said they laughing right along with the world. They love it. They don't know what, when they get home, they don't know what they're going to turn on. So they keep cacking. I know y'all don't like me preaching this stuff, but I'm going to preach it. Man. You got the right one that's going to preach. Yeah, don't you know that? Right now, well, we should be taking this thing right now and, 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 and taking, taking this thing serious. Oh, Pastor, we just have to pray all the time. What the word of God said, pray always. 
world is not to cease. Now this church was really poverty stricken. It was too blind to see his condition. It's bad when you're too blind to see your condition. Me, if you're too blind to see you, your condition, you're not going to change. It means that you're a sinner and need the blood of Jesus out there. So we're the ones supposed to take her there. They need the blood of Jesus to restore them. So, you know, we got these churches. See, they were the church with the golden rules. Do to me as I do to you. You treat me nice, I treat you nice. You don't speak to me, I ain't speaking to you. Mm -hmm. They were just following the golden rules. Do unto me as I would do unto you. Some people like evil. That's why we're not allowed to call whatever God does. We're not allowed to call it evil. You're in danger of the law when you call what God allowed to do when you start calling it evil. That's a dangerous thing. And you're on a dangerous ground even though you're confused. And Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, I would not have your ignorance. So what it means when I would not have you ignorance, what is brevity is not a bad word at all. What, what it means, I would not have you to not know. So I want you to know. Amen. I, I, you need to know. I'm coming to an end with this. Now, he wants to cover the shame of that naked. Now, this is a church that we're claiming Jesus now. I want you to anoint your eyes. He said, those that I love, as many as I love, I rebuke. But we don't want no rebuking in the church. That's a bad word. Preachers don't do no rebuke. You better not rebuke, rebuke, rebuke. God help me. But let God rebuke you. I've been in a place that God can rebuke you and tell you that you're wrong. So he's given the message to John the Apostle. And he said, write these letters to the seven churches and tell them of their condition that I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And I see your works. I see what you're doing. And I, when he said, I see your works, he said, I see your works and I see what you're not getting done or what you're supposed to get done. Oh, praise God in the name of Jesus. And then he said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. He said, be serious. You know what that means? Have a, have a yearning to repent. Have a desire to repent. You know what gave me the desire when I'm wrong to repent? It's the word. It's the word. And when I hear the word preached to an extent, I'm convicted. Then I'm convicted to repent. So he said, he said, behold, he said, look, I'm knocking. I'm knocking. I am knocking Hey, dead church. Dead church of God is knocking on your door. Open up. Now, I'll take this mic and run all around here, run all down the floor. It ain't nothing, nothing I say. Knock. Knock. He's knocking, knocking. Now, you are responsible. He's knocking. You are responsible for open that door. He want to come and suck with you. He want to come and have a conversation with you. He want to come in and talk to you. He want to come in so he come in, you can really talk to God. Lord, forgive me all the things that I've done. God, please forgive me. I know it was wrong. God, now thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace, God. This is my opportunity. Oh, God. We was about to lose out. Now, Jesus had not spoken to John the pastor and send these letters, they would not have an opportunity to get right. But since, Hosha, son, tell y'all, but since God spoke to the last apostle that was left, God never leaves himself without a witness. 
Right, John, as I speak these things, I want you to start writing and warn the churches. Now, when God warns the churches, that is the opportunity. But the time and day that we're living in now, you got the, the church of death, blind, naked, without any covering, setting up there every Sunday. There is a door nail. Oh, I love it. I love it. So he's knocking. He said, any man hear my voice. Now when the preacher stands to preach the truth, the word of God, that is the voice of Jesus speaking to you. That is God's voice. See, that's his voice. See, that's his voice speaking to you. All that other stuff, all the homiletic stuff and all that other stuff they be talking about. Amen. No quote, no scripture, just motivating you. Go to church, the whole church is... Oh, the preacher's so funny. You know we're human. We got, you know, we, we got human. And, you know, that's what they said. You know, you might be human. You laugh. You know. But when you got the whole church, the whole message, you just the whole church. Around. They're getting nothing. They are naked. They need to be closed. They are miserable. And they don't realize that they what they really need. They need the power of the Holy Ghost. And what is said in my conclusion. I'm knocking. If any man hear my voice, open the door, and I will come in to him. It will sup with him, and he with me. I told you, y'all can have a conversation. You can have a conversation. I'm sorry I didn't walk off on this pulpit today. I want to make it plain to him that overcome. See, God will not leave us in a situation after He don't give us an opportunity to change, and you hear Him. They said, well, that's what's the purpose in him tell, talking to John to write these letters to the churches. This is your opportunity. Look what he said. As bad off as they are. As bad off as the church, church some of the churches are. There still is an opportunity for you to be saved if you will hear his voice. And somebody going to hear his voice. If it ain't but one out of a thousand, they're going to hear his voice. Hallelujah. If it's just one out of a thousand, they're going to hear his voice. And he said, to him that overcome, you got to overcome all this stuff. You got to overcome all this stuff in the world. You got to overcome all that stuff, all that junk out there. You got to overcome all that good time stuff, all that stuff. Now, can we imagine, as I told y'all last week, can you imagine you can't enjoy yourself in a restaurant anymore? Can't meet your girlfriend there. Can't meet your boyfriend there. Can't do that no more. Can't go and hide in the restaurant. Say, so got a wife home, so I'm going to meet you over there. Can't do that no more. Hallelujah. Woo! See, we were satisfied. We won't, see, they weren't satisfied. The word of God said, all oh, what they had, all the materialistic things that they had, they had all the money, all the house, all the fancy stuff. There ain't nothing wrong with having a no good looking house. You're supposed to have that. But when you can't get enough, when you got one everywhere you fly in, everywhere you go, you got one. Amen. We ain't, they don't even have time to stand still to preach the gospel to the people. We're so caught up in materialistic stuff. We're so caught up in luxury that they can't stand still and preach the gospel to their own people. My God. He said, to him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Don't you want to sit with him? Even as I also overcame. He said, what I've been through, it was for you, but I overcame in the garden of Gethsemane. I overcame. All the persecution on the cross, suffering for your sin, being beaten, put to a shame for you. I overcome it. I did it for you. Nothing I've done. I was innocent. But I did it for you. I was innocent. Then you're not even innocent. But I was innocent. I was innocent for the unrighteous, that you may become righteous, that you may set with Jesus Christ. So he said, I'm giving the same opportunity. Amen. After they thought I was dead, was not alive, all the apostles, apostles put to death. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He said, wait a minute. Even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne, he that had an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. But the spirit, it's the Lord talking to the church. It's the Lord speaking to you. Oh, shy, my son. I said, it's the Lord. I'm speaking to the church. I say, it's the Lord. 
that's speaking is the Lord that's speaking it is the Lord oh he's speaking where is the Lord where is the Lord oh that's speaking. Well, he's speaking. Oh, glory. Speaking. Speaking his word. Well, oh, glory. It is the Lord. I tell you, my higher. Oh, oh, glory, Jesus. It's the Lord. It is the Lord, it's the Lord that is speaking. Lord, oh, go lift your hands. Lord, we hear you. Hey, shout to you about Oh, we hear you, Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We hear you. Hear Hear your word. Well, that's my word. Hey, my word that I send. If it don't accomplish anything that I send, oh, oh, glory. Shall I tell you my heart? Yeah. And it will complain wherever, wherever I sit here. Did it go in your heart? Did you receive it in your heart? Well, I sent it. Oh, I sent it. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I sent it. Sent it. Oh, glory. Out there, I sent it. It's gonna come to me. Praise God, and I'm gonna fulfill my word. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus! It's gonna fulfill His word. So many bishops had died. They don't have no understanding. They don't have any understanding of that. And uh, I tried to explain to some, praise God, that there was a meeting. There was in a crowd. There was at funerals. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somehow at the beginning, I don't even think they know what the numbers were at the very beginning. But it's God's business, not your business. It's not your business to bring fear to you. And not your bitch. Oh, they got afraid. Oh, I'm not gonna say that, but the bitch will say that, and he died. Oh, be, be not afraid. Oh, we gotta trust him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we gotta trust Jesus. Jesus, 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 on the way. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all there praise him out there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to turn this around that. Praise the name of God. Let's say something briefly. Give the an announcement. And the band of is going to praise us out of here. As you did last week, that's the program. Hallelujah. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We thank you for your word. Come on and give God praise for his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you so much for what we welcome you. Thank you for joining us today for the PCB Ministries in Baltimore, Maryland, 3201. Thank you for joining us with praise and worship in the word of God. We just thank the Lord for being real. God is so real. And we just thank you for joining us every Sunday. We keep hearing about those who are joining. We just thank God for you. And we give God praise. And that's what the praying and fasting is for. To bring you what God is sharing with us. To give to you. We thank God for the staff here. The faithfulness and the 10 people who show up. And we just thank God for you. So we're asking you, all those in the conference line, we thank God. Those of you who are sharing on Facebook, we thank you for sharing what God is doing with PCD Ministries and what God is doing for you and your homes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Keep your heart open. Keep your heart open for whatever the Lord will have all week long. Just keep your, when God changes you, don't change back. We thank God for Pastor Taylor and our husband and son. We thank God for you. So we thank God for everyone who's watching. Every one of you will praise God with us. With just a few announcements. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We want to remind you, the pastor and overseer is calling a fast. For all of the churches, PCD Ministries, and the churches who are under, under PCD Ministries, and we want to, the fast will begin this Tuesday night, 12 midnight. You don't eat, eat anything else after 12 midnight until the next day, 6 p.m. on Wednesday. And at 12 midnight, pastor want us to join together with PCD Ministries and all the churches who are under us in prayer. Call the conference line. 12 midnight Tuesday night when you stop eating. Okay, so there's no prayer 12 midnight on the conference line. So just when you start your fast, stop eating by 12 midnight Tuesday night. And then you come off your fast 6 p.m. Wednesday, but at 5.30 p.m., we're all going to come on the conference line for prayer. And that no, you can join us. And that number is 339-207-8865, 339-207-8865. Once again, if you cannot get through, text the conference line number and say, call me and the conference line number will call you directly in just a few seconds and we thank you for joining us remember all those um with tithes and offerings for pcd ministries remember the cash app address is dollar sign pcd ministries that's dollar sign pcd ministries and all those pcd ministries who are giving your love offerings to dr marie bryce we thank you for your faithfulness is dollar sign dr M. Bryce. That's dollar sign D R M Bryce. Please do not forget Bible study this Thursday on the conference line, 7 7 15 p.m. We'll begin PPW prayer, praise, and worship in 7 30 exactly. The pastor will be coming on with Bible study teaching, and that's 339 207 8865. Please share with others. And we thank you for your faithfulness. God bless you, Evangelist Booker. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in 
the Lord until I die. Trust in the Lord.